Associates back in 1987, 30 years ago. You're now not part of the company. Uh, you sold this to Intel Corporation, but it's probably the most famous antivirus software out there. Hey, but let's talk about the intelligence report that has surfaced. Well, I, I've read that entire 25 page report multiple times, um, and half of it is, is laughable. Mm -hmm. uh, it is absurd beyond belief. Um, for example, uh, they're expecting us to believe that the Russian intelligence services are foolish enough to leave the Russian language in the code, to <laughs> leave the date and time stamp that the program was compiled, uh, to use a Cyrillic keyboard, which could be, which could be detected by forensic science, uh, and, and lastly, to have an IP address that points back to the Russian Kremlin. Seriously, imagine what would happen here in America if the CIA were to hack Russia um, and we left the IP address of the programmer on the second floor of the CIA offices. So, so in all sincerity, this, and they also claim that uh, this is the type of software that the Russians use. Well, unfortunately, it's the type of software that hundreds of thousands of hackers also use. Uh, once a piece of software is out there, it gets onto the dark web and everybody's using it. So the way that this was done and the lack of sophistication suggests a 15 year old boy or an 18 year old somewhere who's bored uh, in their bedroom at night going, let's see if I can hack into the DNC. And with that software, of course they could. The DNC was not protected either physically or by education because it was a simple phishing technique that got them in, meaning Somebody opened an email and clicked a link from someone they did not know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. how, how bizarre, how absurd. So it cannot possibly have been a nation state, let alone the Russian nation state. They are way too sophisticated to make that many mistakes. It's absurd beyond belief, absurd beyond belief. Plus, yeah. the, the software that was used is a year and a half old and yeah. has had many updates since that time. So... Uh, in all sincerity, do you think the, the Russians spent all of this time updating and fixing their bugs and then decided <laughs> to use a software piece that was a year and a half old? No. Everything points to a teenager or a very unsophisticated hacker. It could very easily have been an inside job. Yeah. Um, we do not know. Here's the thing. If a hacker organization is smart enough technologically competent enough, which we must assume the Russian government is, just like we are, then there is simply no way to trace that back. Even though in the report, there's a sentence in the report that says, it is extremely difficult to find attribution for any hack, but not impossible. Mm -hmm. And then they go on to say, we, we know what specific tools people use. We know how they act. Well, good Lord, that's how all hackers act, and all hackers use the same tools. I mean, Absolutely. It's, it's either our, uh, and, and, uh, without disrespecting our intelligence services, we are, um, they are either naive or they are purposely deceiving us, one or the other. Of course, it's about politics, and of course, this is politically motivated. Um, and, and anybody could see this if they look through the, the, the smoke and mirrors that the intelligence service is giving us. It is, it's a trivial thing for us, especially any cybersecurity specialist will see the holes in this system. Well, that's, that's entirely possible, but I think, I think the motive behind, behind what's happening now is you notice that as soon as we started pointing fingers at Russia, as trying to manipulate our elections, 
nobody's paying any attention to the actual emails anymore. That's right. Because isn't that the real problem? Oh, yeah. Isn't that, isn't, isn't that what this is truly about? Misconduct that no one's paying any attention to now because we have a misdirection going, oh, there's something far more important than this misconduct. And that is the fact that it was the Russians that told us about it. Please, wake up, America. Wake the F up. I'm going to be really frank with you. If our voting machines have not been hacked by someone, and if they have been, it's been most likely by one or the other of our political parties, Yes. Th then I'll eat one of my shoes. Yes. <laughs> because voting machines are no different than any other computer. They were designed and built by private companies that employ thousands of people. Now, I promise you, you know human nature. If you have 1,000 people, I guarantee you one or two of them are going to be bad apples. They're going to be people who are planted there by your competition or by the Democratic Party or the Republican Party or the Chinese or someone. And because of that, I promise you, these machines are hackable and have been hacked. Well, feel my like? feeling is this. We are not prepared for electronic voting. We're just not. We don't have the cybersecurity in place, the secure systems that can guarantee that these things cannot be hacked. We, we don't. We have to stay with the paper system for, for many years. Many years. You must believe me. I agree. Hackers are clever beyond belief. And we are in a very slippery slope here where the slightest misstep will, will turn this nation from a democracy into a theocracy or an oligarchy or a, a, a dictatorship. Yeah. And we can't let that happen. I'm sorry, we're just not ready. I don't care what the voting machine people tell you, the ones that make them, that create them, and sell them. We're not ready. Well, I think the first thing we have to do is accept the fact that we are vulnerable. Uh, the reason I ran for, for president in the Libertarian Party, I mean, you know, I know, everybody knows I could not possibly be, be president with the baggage that I carry. However, it gave me a platform from which I could speak about something extremely important, which is America's lack of cybersecurity, lack of cyber awareness. Um, we are bamboozled by our government. They can put out these 25-page reports and suddenly every news agency except for places like Alex Jones uh, or RT where I was talking last night, uh, everybody's just repeating it as if it's true without thinking it through, without understanding the basic precepts of cybersecurity and what is possible and what is not possible. And what is in this report, this 25-page report, is simply not possible. Now, the only people who understand that are the cybersecurity specialists. Mm -hmm. But who listens to us? Yeah. Is, exactly. Has anybody called me in from mainstream media? I've been on uh, RT twice. I've been uh, on uh, London Radio, International Business Times in London. But here in America, nobody. Why? Because my narrative denies the main narrative that the mainstream media is pushing. I, I'm very concerned and, and about... You also yes. need to understand that the intelligence services have a chain of command, uh, and people have orders that they simply follow. Uh, and if someone comes into your office and says, we have information, we can't divulge where we got it, where the Russians are hacking uh, our election, uh, we need you to verify this, well, that's your job. You're going to try to come up with whatever you can, no matter how absurd. I mean, we can't blame our intelligence services because this is a politicized operation. And who do most of the covert agencies report to? The executive branch of the government, President Obama. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're risking your, you're risking your job if you buck the train. If yeah, you say to your boss, well, what I found out is that or, they, they didn't hack it. Well, what's going to happen to you? You're going to be demoted, at least. Mm -hmm. You're going to be ignored. You're going to be shoved aside. You may be fired. So you cannot blame all of these people. They're in a tight spot. It is a politicized process in which we are all entrapped.
because they all reported to George Bush. Uh, they had their jobs because of George Bush. Mm -hmm. George Bush had the power to fire them all. Yes. Understand this. So that if the intelligence services understand that their president demands specific intelligence, then that's the intelligence they're going to give him for self-preservation. I mean, some of these people are making a lot of money and have homes that they have to pay for and children they're putting through college and have to feed themselves. You oh, yeah. can't blame them all. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I think that Donald Trump is clever enough to have his own intelligence community mm -hmm. outside of the structured community of the NSA, CIA, the FBI, and so on. Uh, he would be crazy not to, given the history that we've, we've seen. Uh, the, our in, entire intelligence services all agreeing that Iraq, that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. The entire intelligence community all agreeing with high probability that Russia hacked the DNC. Now, by the way, what was interesting to me is the one holdout was the NSA. Who mm -hmm. Instead of saying very high probability, they say, well, with moderate probability, we believe the Russians hacked the DNC. Well, you know what that says? Is that, well, okay, so at least there's some degree of courage. But really, that was the only holdout. Yeah. And, and it was only that from high probability to moderate. Well, I appreciate that one little thing. It tells me that at least somebody within the SA is going, hey, this is crazy, people. But, but, but look at me. I mean, I, I'm constantly trashing our intelligence services with all due respect to you as intelligence people. Because you have not kept up with the times. Now, Donald Trump is president-elect. He can protect himself. What about me? I'm sitting alone in, in a home in the country. What do you think could happen to me? In all seriousness, do you think that just because we are in America, that people are not disappeared, oh, yeah. scheduled for suicide? Oh, absolutely. Or insanity, or God knows what? And yet I am speaking out because I love this country. I am the prototypical patriot. I am the embodiment of the American dream. <laughs> if there's nobody, if there's someone more patriotic than me, tell me. And if anyone believes I am not, then you come to my door and tell me to my face that I am not a patriot. Please. Oh, because absolutely. I am. You, you've got a new website. It's mgtci.com. What is that, John? Where people can uh, find and, and MGT is... Um, the, the state-of-the-art new security system. The old paradigm of antivirus software is dead. I created it. I should know. Uh, the reason we have had all of these hacks uh, with the, uh, uh, the Office of Personnel Management, the FBI, Homeland Security, they were all protected by the, by the state-of-the-art software, and it didn't help. At MGT, we are developing a new paradigm that will, in fact, give protection, not just to the average American, but to the American government as well. And, you know, everybody is at risk for being hacked. Everybody is at risk for uh, having their identity stolen, for having false information planted about them. So that's something everybody should be concerned about. And they can find out more about that at MGTCI.com. Thank you so much, John McAfee. Thank You're you. Welcome. You really are a true patriot. Thank you for breaking that down for us. Thank mm -hmm. you.